Hey there, my name's Lacey. I'm the owner and founder of Rainbow Parrot Art, and today I'm going to be showing you how to design beach houses. Okay, first off, take a look at these beach houses. How cute are they? How can you not want to draw these? I love beach houses and I love beach house drawings, especially really simple ones, like really simple, old, shacky looking beach houses. <laughs> I love how shacky and dilapidated this one looks. Check out this one. I'm gonna be loosely basing my composition on this artwork by local artist, Beth Hendrickson Logan. Beth Hendrickson Logan is an artist from here in the Pacific Northwest and I grew up looking at her artwork I love this boathouse scene that she's created. I think it's of Salmon Beach, which is uh, this really obscure little fishing village from the early 1900s that still exists today, and very few people know about it, but it's really quaint and magical and cool. I've listed the materials I'm going to be using for this project in the links in the description below. I have created this project with the hopes that people of all ages will enjoy making it, kids as well as adults. Now I'm gonna walk you through the drawing process. For starters, I recommend orienting your paper horizontally, not vertically. A couple inches below the middle of your paper, draw a line going across your paper. This will be the water's edge. Be sure to use light pencil marks while you draw so that you can easily erase any mistakes that you make. About an inch and a half above this line, draw a second line across your page. Add a wavy line across the paper near the top of your picture. This wavy line will represent the forest behind your beach houses. Okay, so let's look at the different parts of our drawing so far. Here at the bottom is where the water is going to be, and then in the middle between these two purple lines is going to be the beach where I'm going to put the beach houses. And then behind that is the forest, and right above the forest is going to be the sky. Now let's talk about our beach houses. Yay, this is my favorite part. I recommend drawing three to five beach houses standing on stilts in the sand. Take time to consider the placement of your beach houses in your picture. Here's an example of beach houses that look too symmetrical. Notice how the left side of the paper looks almost exactly the same as the right side of the paper. Don't do that, it just looks boring. Now compare this overly symmetrical drawing that we just looked at on the left to this drawing on the right. The houses on the right are each a different size and shape, which makes them less symmetrical and more interesting. Also, notice how that main house is slightly off-center from the middle of the page. Again, the off-center placement of this house makes the picture look less symmetrical and more interesting. Before drawing your actual houses, draw a circle to indicate where you want each house to be on your paper. Remember, your houses are going to be sitting on stilts, so draw your circles slightly above the sand so you leave room for the stilts. Now, in each of these lightly penciled in circles, draw a beach house on stilts. Notice how I drew a horizontal platform for the house above the sand, and I'm gonna draw the stilts in underneath it. This way, the stilts look like they're rising up from the sand. In case you're still figuring out how you wanna design your houses, here are some fun ideas. Notice how these designs don't have stilts underneath them, but you can add stilts to any design you choose. Oh, by the way, don't forget to erase your circle marks after you finish drawing your houses. Real quickly now, I'm going to walk you through my process of drawing my second house. I start by drawing the platform that my house is sitting on, and then I draw the stilts underneath it. You can have so much fun adding details to your houses. Just in this one drawing, you can see that I've added window shutters, a window flower pot, a tropical plant, a ladder, a tiny rowboat, a surfboard, a chimney, and old wooden pilings. See if you can design one of your houses so it cuts off the edge of the page, like this house I'm designing on the right. On the left side of my paper, I decided to draw another house that hangs off the side of the page. Now that I'm done drawing my houses in pencil, I'm gonna go back and outline them with an ultra-fine Sharpie. 
Don't forget to draw the second line behind your houses to indicate where the beach ends and the forest begins. It will make your picture look a lot more three-dimensional and have a lot more depth. Now I'm gonna add a few more fun details such as this inner tube, a sailboat on the right, and by the way, here are some really cool sailboats if you're looking for ideas. Now I'm drawing a larger sailboat on the left. Notice I'm drawing in Sharpie so that you can see better, but you should really draw all the details of your picture in pencil first, and then when you're done drawing, go back and outline everything with the ultrafine Sharpie. I thought it would be fun to add a few seals in the water. Maybe you can think of a few other fun sea creatures to add popping out of your water. Don't forget to add a wavy line behind your houses to indicate where the forest ends and the sky begins. Consider adding some seagulls into your picture. <laughs> and maybe some pink flamingos as well. When you're done outlining your drawing with the ultra fine Sharpie, go back and carefully erase all of your pencil marks. Now you're ready to start adding color to your picture. You can use whatever types of coloring utensils you want. I like to start by adding some white crayon or in the water of my picture, and that way if I watercolor over it, it pops out and looks really cool. Pause. I wanted to share this cute picture of my niece. Look how cute she is. Okay, back to our picture. I decided to use alcohol-based markers to color in most of my picture because I love how bright they are. You could color in your sailboats to be regular old boring sailboats, or you could color them in to look like these. How cool are these? Don't these just make you happy when you look at them? I decided it would be fun to color in my houses with really bright colors like you see here. Notice how I'll often use a scratch paper to test my color before I use it on my artwork. Okay, now I'm coloring house number two. I'm really happy about the pink flamingo I added in the planter in the front. I'm coloring in my house on the right light purple and I'm adding dark purple window panes. Here I'm blending several different browns together to make my roof look a bit more rustic. You might consider adding some smoke coming out of your chimney. I love how this sailboat turned out. Try blending multiple colors together when you create your sand, like right here where I'm using beige, a cream color, and light gray. Here are the colors I chose to color in my forest background. Notice how I'm using a variety of different greens. I'm creating a patchwork of abstract shapes for my forest. I decided to paint my sky and my water with watercolor. See how I'm getting my paper wet before I add the watercolor? This is called the wet on wet technique. Doing this makes it easy to apply your watercolors more evenly. I'm using a size eight round brush to add red and then yellow to make a sunset in my sky. Keep some paper towels nearby so you can dab up any extra puddles of water. Before painting my water, I decided to tape my paper down with some painter's tape. This will prevent your paper from buckling when it gets wet and make it easier to apply the watercolor evenly. Now, just as I did for my sky, I'm using a one inch flat brush to apply a very thin layer of water to my paper before I add the watercolor paint. Be sure to dab up any extra puddles of water with a paper towel. I want my blue watercolor paint to be very light, so I put some blue paint in the lid of my watercolor tray and now I'm going to add some water to it. The more water I add, the lighter my blue will get. I'm adding a light blue wash over my water. Now I'm taking some darker blue and adding it into the bottom of my painting. When you're done painting, you can remove the painter's tape, but be super careful. See how I tore my painting right here? I'm just painting over the ripped part with some blue watercolor. Yay, it's all finished. If you try this project at home, be sure to let me know how it goes in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching today, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I teach super fun live online art classes to kids as well as to adults. You can find out more information by visiting my website, rainbowparrotart.com. You might enjoy watching one of these videos next. They're super fun. Special thanks to my mom, who's a huge source of inspiration in my life. Thanks, mom.